All right. We'll call the City Council meeting in North Bend, Washington for April 4th, 2023 to order here at City Hall. First item on the agenda, would the clerk please confirm the roll? All council members are present, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And we'll now move to the flag salute. Uh, Mr. Elwood, I think it's your turn. Thank you, Jade. that. First on tonight's agenda is the consent agenda. I understand we have a motion. Mr. Rosen? Is council, that's item four in the consent agenda packet. Any objections? Item is now removed from the consent agenda. It will become item number 11, following uh, the rest of the regular agenda on the main agenda. Thank you very much. With that change, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Cothell, second by uh, Ms. Miller. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Citizen comments, at this time, if you are a member of the public, either here in council chambers or online, would like to address council on any item not on tonight's agenda, please come forward to the podium if you're here in chambers or indicate uh, in the chat box or by star nine if you are online, we'll call upon you. We start here in chamber. So I'm scanning the crowd to see if anyone's leaping to their feet. Seeing no one. Rita, do we have anyone online? Yes, we do. Michael Thomas. Michael, you know the procedure. Start with yep. your name and address for the record and three minutes. Thank sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and the esteemed council members. Uh, Michael Thomas, uh, 1231 LaForest Drive, SC. Uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, to speak tonight. And uh, no doubt many of us uh, in the city and nearby have noted the recent developments between the city of North Bend and the Salal Water Association regarding the proposed uh, uh, draft contract, uh, which of course is of uh, great interest and concern considering my history on water. I would like to though take a moment though to, re to uh, thank the uh, Muckleshoot, Yakima, and Tulalip tribes for their testimony against Senate Bill 5517 um, that really would have harmed the river and many water interests. It was very interesting, and I would encourage citizens to listen to the mayor's testimony regarding the, the city's difficulty in realizing additional mitigation sources. For example, the city purchased the Cascade Golf Course in hopes of using it as mitigation water, uh, which the Foster decision actually prevents. Uh, and the city testified uh, to that fact that it was unable to realize, uh, appears to be unable to realize you know, the Cascade Golf Course water. Um, this is a grave concern, you know, reading the, the city's 2020 water system plan, uh, Annex U, where the city uh, relied on the Cascade Golf Course water um, for uh, its mitigation plan. Uh, it would appear that uh, the city is now short. Uh, if the city, if I recall, required 1.21 cubic feet per second. And without the mitigation, the golf course water, it, uh, it would only, and there, its minimum assumptions have one cubic feet per second. So this is of grave concern. And where this you know, intersects with the contract is, and citizens are due, is you know, where, does, where does this leave for additional mitigation water? You know, if law it, is that all that is ever going to be available uh, to the city uh, for mitigation to really supply its users? Uh, with the backup source that the, the protest had already always required. Uh, it concerns me the difference uh, between the amount of mitigation water and the protested ROE and its for most conservative forecast that, that uh, it was to exhaust 16 years by the rate of water available. 
I believe citizens in our area, both the city of North Bend and Salal are owed a substantial revisit to all the engineering and planning. How much uh, water uh, does the city of North Bend have left or how much, how many units ERUs can be supported in the existing system? How much growth is available? And similarly on the Salal side, how much growth is enabled? You know, is 100 acre feet enough? Is the pumping capacity of 700 GPM or lower sufficient to meet the needs? And again, I feel it's very premature to approve this contract without a revisit to this engineering and really an open revisit to bring that forward. And I would ask the council and, and, and city engineers and other people to really you know, think about that and use tremendous prudence because in the past, we very we suffered tremendously as the result of you know missing planning. Michael, uh, you need to summarize. Thank you very much. And I would hope that you know, folks would you know, look at this with great due diligence and revisit the engineering with great care because we've suffered so badly with poor engineering and planning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, anyone else? No one else. All right, thank you. And with that, we will move on to announcements, presentations, and appointments. And I, I got to tell you, I'm pretty stoked tonight. So, Council, uh, citizens here, along with staff, it is my distinct honor to speak tonight, to you tonight about one of the Valley's finest citizens and just a great all-around person that I have had the pleasure to know. In a few moments, I'll tell you a little bit about how Ron Crouch has been a fixture in our town and integral to the success of both the Colgate and the Meadowbrook Farm. First, I need to share with you that on a personal basis, he is also one of those Valley leaders who welcomed me in the community, got me involved in service to this community. He also, when he learned that I had bought a farm, sold me my first cow and calf at what I found out some years later was a very favorable price. Took a hit. And let me tell you, my dear Annabelle, that's my girl's named her, uh, was a great uh, cow. And she went on to have 10 more calves at least or uh, I moved her to a new farm uh, and uh, allowing somebody else to uh, take her under their wing. She never missed a year and she provided me great joy uh, with the exception of the occasional breakout. In the past. Through it all, Ron was there to help me, educate me, and at times to even step in and take over when I needed guidance in raising cattle in our valley. Just 93 years young, he is still one of my best friends and advisors. And he did the same for so many others here. Ron managed cattle at Tollgate Farm for over 50 years, helping to continue the history and the heritage of local agriculture within the Snoqualmie Valley, important to North Bend's character and identity. He mentored multiple new farmers. I mentioned including myself, assisting them in learning how to raise and develop better animals through better breeding and nutrition. Ron has served on the Meadowbrook Farm Preservation Association since 2005, providing valuable support and input to Meadowbrook Farms management, operation, and planning. Beyond that, he mowed the fields at Meadowbrook Farm with his own tractor, mower, and fuel many, many years, not billing Farm Preservation Association for his time or gas. And he conducted multiple repairs to the Meadowbrook Farm tractors and mowing equipment. That's volunteering and then some. He also continued regular mowing and maintenance of the fields at the Colgate Farm for the city of North Bend from the time it was acquired by the city in 2001, till just a few years ago. Just for good measure, outside of farming, Ron volunteered on the credit committee for our local homegrown credit union, Snow Falls Credit. He 
He did that for over four years. Two remarks that came in, and I let some folks know that uh, we, we wanted to honor Ron tonight. According to Dave Batty, not knowing Dave or him, uh, he is a Valley historian. According to, according to Dave, Ron's mechanical knowledge is amazing. Ron can fix anything mechanical. He was the manager of the millwrights at the Snoqualmie Falls Warehouser Mill. Millwrights kept the mill humming, even though much of the equipment was built around World War I. He could not purchase many of the mill parts as they were worn out, so you had to rebuild them. Very few people today have the talent of equipment and farming on so freely shared with us. Finally, to my dear friend Janice Crouch, his main passion during his farming time was to help preserve Colgate Farm. His love of the land, cattle, most of his time, either raising cattle or making hay. He did a significant amount of haying and baling for himself, as well as many others in the area. He spent the better part of his life here farming both the Meadowbrook and the Tollgate. It was a life well spent. He loved it. Once a farmer, always a farmer. Now, considering that she's been second fiddle to his farming passion for nine plus decades, <clears throat> she still stayed with him. That, um, I'm going to go a little off script here and say if there, I see some folks in the audience, if there's anyone in the audience that wanted to step to the podium and say anything about Ron, uh, allow that, and then I'm going to invite Ron up. So don't feel the pressure, but uh, seeing some folks, I wanted to make. Ron? Really appreciate you stepping forward, and, and remember, Janice has to let him know, because he's not really hearing me. You'd step forward to the podium, say a few words, we'd really appreciate that. No comment. <laughs> And also, that, that picture was taken the year he went, I be, if I remember right, was the year he went on to uh, the uh, Meadowbrook Foundation board. And my understanding is that he and I joined the board at the same time, although that didn't oh, seem right. It seemed to me he was there along with. Let you know that Ron didn't want to speak at all, and I'm forcing this. So, well, I can't hear him, so I don't know. I wish to thank you for acknowledging all the many, many years the the opportunity to farm the valley from Snoqualmie to North Bend on both the uh, my early time at Meadowbrook and uh, close to 60 years that I spent on, on Tollgate. That now this is so important to me because I see that Meadowbrook with Mary Norton and uh, Tollgate with uh, uh, Travis, are being well taken care of. Uh, Ogate is being well farmed. And these are so important that I can see in the future and they will mean so much to the people of the Valley and the people of North Bend. Uh, I've been very fortunate 
You have been married to the same beautiful woman for a couple of months short of 65 years. And we've lived in the same house in North Bend for 65 years. And we've lived here because the people are so very, very good. We had so many great friends and great neighbors. And I wish to say thank you and thank you to all of you. Thank you all. Thank you, Council, especially as you uh, got a flavor of Ron is a unique and wonderful person, and I, I really thrilled that uh, we were able to do that for him. As as I mentioned, he was he was uh, telling me he didn't want to say a word, and I said you have to get up. He said, "Well, I'm just going to say thank you." <laughs> we got a little more than that, didn't we? And when it was an important word. So uh, appreciate that. Well, with that, we'll move on to the main agenda. Item number nine on your agenda is uh, AB 23-043. This is a motion authorizing a contract for solid waste and recycling services. Mr. Rigos. Mayor, good evening, Council. Page 91 in your packet. About solid waste. Solid waste includes, of course, garbage. Uh, we've tracked last years with the public, this 15 years with solid waste, and we look forward to uh, 12 years with ecology. Um, we have Ned Jurgensen with us tonight on Zoom. We don't have Jeff Brown. Um, ecology and Republic, the highest scoring. Companies, the rates are similar. Staff feels good about the quality of services that uh, Recology can provide because of staff representation of Recology. Very much. Um, Council, any clarifying questions for Mr. Rigos before we go to public? Mr. Rosen. A couple quick questions. Mark, I guess that'll be it. Uh, in the agenda item here on page 93, it talks about uh, the 7.5% administrative fee being used for pavement overlay. Um, 
questions along those lines. First is, have we set up a special account and have we set up a policy to direct those funds to pavement overlay? And that is so future councils and administration can understand the intent of, the, of where those funds are. Yeah, I think. As I see, it's in here. I don't recall council passing that policy, but I think it is something most council seems to be supportive of. Um, if that is the intent, I would like to see us bring that forward in the very near future so that we can codify that and future individuals that on the council side or the administration or staff side can understand the intent and desire to spend those funds on the paper. All right, thank you. Anyone else clarifying? All right. If you're a member of the public, wish to speak on this item, either here in council chambers, move towards the podium or online, indicate in the chat box or by star nine if you're on your phone, we'll call upon you. There we go. Knew somebody had to get up. We start naming an address for the record. Once again, for inviting us back on behalf of Recology's employee owners, we remain honored that the city's considering us for the opportunity to serve the city's residents and businesses for the next 12 years and share in our world, in our vision for a world without waste. Although our company is a new face for here for the city of North Bend, we're not new to the industry. We're not new to King County. Um, what we will bring to the city of North Bend is what we believe is the best value in our industry in this area a local management team with hundreds of years of industry experience. 11 cities in King County already recognize our value with long-term contracts. And we've, over the past 15 years, we've, we've implemented many, many new contracts um, with seamless transitions, and we would intend to do the same here. Ecology is a 100% employee-owned company, and we've been around for over 100 years. Our ownership culture will drive a strong commitment to service quality here in the city of North Bend. Being employee owned enables us to make local decisions for our local city relationships and have the citizens' best interests in heart. Every Recology employee owner understands what's at stake as an owner of this company. We believe Recology is a different kind of partner for this city. Our, our relationships with our cities are not something we ever take for granted. We focus on doing what is best for the community. We collaborate and get creative with our municipal partners, go beyond what is required on paper. Our goal is to make each and every one of your residents and businesses a satisfied customer. So thank you once again for inviting us here tonight, and we'd be happy to answer any questions any of you would have. Thank you. Anyone else here in chamber? Good evening. Anthony Brocato, General Manager of Recology King County. My address, uh, my office is 801 South Fidalgo Street in Seattle. Uh, good evening, Mayor McFarland and council members. Um, thank you for the privilege of your time tonight. All of Recology is absolutely ecstatic at this opportunity. Our operations team, our customer service team are all on the ready to build out an implement implementation and service plan for the city of North Bend. April 2024 will be here in a blink, and we're in a position to be ready for you all. Equally as important, uh, we're excited to join your community as partners. There was a discussion a couple of weeks ago um, about Recology's brand matching closely or aligning closely with the city's values. Uh, this was a meaningful statement, statement to me because for our employee owners and for me, the cities we service and operate in are a major source of pride. We have drivers that boast and are excited about the fact that they get to operate and collect in a city and potentially retire there. Huge source of pride for our team. Our goal is to bring that same sense of enthusiasm and dedication to your community and of North Bend and to exceed your expectations and quality of service and to exceed your expectations of what it means to have a true partner and solid waste and recycling service provider. Again, thank you for your consideration and we wholeheartedly look forward to building a longstanding partnership. With Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
Members of Council, I'll try to keep it brief tonight. Again, my name is Logan Harvey. I'm the Government Community Relations Manager for College of King County. As uh, my colleagues have stated, we're extremely excited to uh, potential for, for Council to pass this tonight and then select Recology for a 12-year partnership. Um, I'm the primary contact with all of our cities, and I, I promise to bring that kind of personal touch and personal feel to that relationship and that partnership going forward. Our outreach team is really excited to get your hands on the city and start reaching out to your businesses, helping them divert material out of landfill into recycling and compost streams. And we really think we'll be the best uh, company to, to push you forward and move towards those diversion goals. Uh, I really want to thank staff um, and your, your consultant group for uh, uh, this process and council for your careful consideration. We really look forward to uh, getting started here. And uh, by the time this contract uh, comes about and we're, we're implementing the city, we'll, we'll have the experience of rolling out a new contract in the city of Issaquah, um, uh, a brand new city in the city of Tequila and the city of uh, Des Moines. So we'll be a very experienced team and make sure this is a nice, smooth landing uh, for, for the city of North. Thank you for your time and I uh, look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Seeing anyone else moving in chambers? Do we have anyone online? Hey, can you hear me? And please start name and address for the record. Uh, this is Jason Ritchie, address is 2802 South 16th Street. Uh, just quick statement on solid waste as well as on the um, uh, my understanding is a updated contract that's been sent to the city um, by Salal. Um, just urge the city, I, I believe that that is the intent tonight with solid waste, but just urge, urge the city on both matters um, um, to not move hastily, but move with haste um, and continue to move both of these items forward. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, anyone else? One else. That, I think I'll turn my attention to Mr. Loudenbeck. For a motion, Your Honor? For a motion. First, I'd like to uh, mention before making the motion that uh, the print packet is incorrect. And this is uh, AB 23-043, not 038. So with that noted as a Scribner's error, Move forward. Motion to approve AB 23-043, authorizing the mayor to enter into and execute 12-year comprehensive garbage recyclables and compostables collection services contract, Ecology King County Incorporated, period of April 1, 2024 through March 31st, 2036, in a form and content approved by the city attorney. So final reading. I'm back. Do I have a second? Council Member Colon, Mr. Loudenbeck, anything further to add? No, Your Honor. Uh, I made my views uh, known in the last meeting, and I'll be voting similarly tonight. Um, I believe Recology is going to be great for our city, and I, I did want to note to our citizens that although the rates will be going up, Recology had we did a contract with any other waste management, their rates would have gone up as well. So it's not fair to think that rates would have stayed the same as they are right now, moving forward into 2020. Yeah. So, yes. Seeing none. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Rosen. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. I will second. Heather said, regardless of which contract we elected, the rates were going to go up by a substantial amount. I believe in the end that Recology is the better choice of the two, that are aligns with our values in North Bend and our citizens' desires to see a more greener approach to that proposal. With that being said, and I do support this because it needs to be done, and it is the better of the two, I will express my concern about not doing everything in our powers to reduce the tax, not reducing the administrative seven and a half percent tax that I don't believe is appropriate. And I wish we would not have done that. That being said, contract must go forward. This is about garbage and not that smaller item. We'll be supporting that. But I also 
we'll bring this back at some point in the near future because I believe when our citizens see the first bill, like my wife, others, gonna flip. And I apologize. I wish there was something we could do on a larger scale to reduce the cost. But there are things we could do to bring the cost down on a smaller scale. In the future, we would reconsider that. Thank you, Your Honor. Jocelyn. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I see it as a great opportunity. I would hope the community might come together and see this as an opportunity to uh, do better. Um, looking at the statistics in terms of, of waste generation from North Bend, and as Jeff, the consultant, mentioned, I believe, last meeting, uh, rates are elastic. Folks have some opportunity to downsize to generate less waste. I am impressed that uh, the representation here tonight from the uh, new provider, I hope I will be voting in favor. Um, that speaks loudly to me, and I think there is opportunities to move this together and set a standard that does align with the city's mission and values, and things come at a cost. The planet is suffering. It, it takes effort and focus to make a difference. And this is the smallest of things, and it might cost a little bit more. I would point out, as did Council Member Colin, that for an average person like me, looking at what I know, my rates under this contract, as opposed to the competitor, will be less than they would have been under that other contract. So you do need to look closely. Um, as has been stated, the rates are going to nearly double regardless of the decision made by council. And this, is, I think, is a very positive step in a new direction for us. And I hope that we can rally around it and, and feel like we have you know, are moving in a good direction together. Seeing no other, motion before you is to approve AB 23043, authorizing the mayor to enter into a Execute a 12-year comprehensive garbage, recyclables, postables, collection services contract, Ecology King County, Inc., for the period April 1st, 2024, March 31st, 2036, in a form and content approved by the city attorney as a final reading. All in favor? Aye. 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 As opposed? Nay. Nay. Uh, the ayes have it. I have to two with Council Member Loudenbach and uh, Thank you very much for that. Moving on, next item on our agenda is item number 10. This is an ordinance adopting North Bend Municipal Code 9.190.020. Lynch, I believe you're going to introduce this item. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come talk about. Second, let's make sure we have that mic. Is this on? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, like I was saying, thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to come talk about something that I'm pretty passionate about, and that's the uh, ability to put bad guys in jail hold them accountable for when they violate our laws and victimize our citizens. Um, I have identified a hole in the, uh, in the municipal code and the RCW of the state of Washington that is allowing some of these criminals to commit crimes against our citizens and then go without penalty. Um, first slide there. Um, we're going to be talking about the stolen vehicle epidemic that's going on in Washington State right now. Um, when I made this slideshow and pulled these stats, uh, the state stats um, had been compiled through the end of November of last year. So in 2022, from January to the end of November, 41,330 cars were lost, stolen in the state. It was out to about 132 a day. Um, there are different reasons for spike. Um, and it's been going up um, each year over the last four or five years. Um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, potential reasons for this spike. Um, in 2020, 
there were no property crimes that were allowed to be booked into the King County Jail or to municipal jails. They were for mandatory crimes against persons only. Um, so those that were out committing those crimes were going without any jail time whatsoever. Um, police reform laws in 2021 uh, prohibiting the um, law enforcement's ability to pursue stolen vehicles, stolen vehicles, and the possession of a stolen vehicle is not one of the laws that we are allowed state law to pursue. Um, there are many times where we get behind cars and we hit our red and blue lights and they just take off. Um, criminals are taking advantage of the defunded, demoralized, and understaffed police departments. Um, and the restrictive filing standards by the King County Prosecutor's Office. I'm not here to bump on the King County Prosecutor's Office. There are reasons why um, they have to be restrictive in their filing standards, and I'll explain a little bit of that. On the next slide, it shows you the um, letter of the law that we have on the books in the RCW. <laughs> um, for possession of stolen vehicle, You'll notice in there that there's only one thing that we have to prove for you to be guilty is that you possessed a stolen vehicle in the state of Washington. Um, a class B felony and lesson on the levels of crimes, there's three levels of felonies. There are A, B, and C. Um, there is no possession of a stolen vehicle misdemeanor law. So we are putting cases to the King County Prosecutor's Office when we are lucky enough to find somebody in a stolen car that doesn't run from us and we are able to, to uh, make the arrest. And go to the next slide. Times that we do, we get things back like this. And this is an actual decline letter from the King County Prosecutor's Office. And you can see in the first paragraph, it says to convict a suspect. Now there is not just one burden of proof, there are four. And law enforcement does a good job of number one, did the suspect possess a stolen vehicle? We do a great job of number three, uh, did the suspect withhold or appropriate the vehicle from the true owner? And a great job of number four, did it occur in Washington State? Number two that we have a difficulty with with the county prosecutor's office, there is a standard that they have set um, that if you are in possession of a stolen vehicle, and you have not damaged the ignition, you don't have a flathead screwdriver sticking out as your key, then in the eyes of the King County Prosecutor's Office, we cannot prove that they had knowledge that the car was stolen. So the people that go out to their driveways in the morning during the winter, cross their cars and think, oh, it's just North Bend, and let it run. It'll be warm when I come out, the car's gone. These were in the car. Now we make that car stolen. We are lucky enough to find somebody sleeping in it, or they just decide to pull over for some odd reason. We go to stop them. We arrest them. We put them in jail. They're released immediately. Property crime. We file with the King County Prosecutor's Office. And under those circumstances that I've explained to you, we will get a decline back saying that they are not filing criminal charges. Let me go to the next slide for me for a second. To illustrate how many um, stolen vehicles that we are recovering, stolen vehicles that we are losing um, over the last couple of years, you can see the numbers have gone up. In North Bend in 2021, we lost 20 and we recovered 20. It's a little bit confusing the way that I have this, and I've had questions about this, but I've seen this slide. It doesn't mean that we recovered those 20, it means we recovered 20 that were stolen maybe in North Bend, maybe in Snoqualmie, maybe in Seattle, they just end up here. Um, so the numbers jumped in 2022 to 28 stolen, 32 recovered. Go to the next one and I will show you the numbers of declines at these numbers here indicate people that have stolen a car or been in possession of a stolen vehicle and we identified them we tried to hold them accountable, and the King County Prosecutor's Office said no. Let me 
you can see the jump 2021 from two to seven. And when I made this slide in January of this year, we've had three, we will have plenty more. It takes about eight to nine months for our cases to go through a review process at the King County Prosecutor's Office. But we will be getting 2022 declines well into 2023. So those numbers will go up. Not a huge amount of our citizens that were, were affected by this, but it's not important until you're one of those numbers and the victim is powerless over holding the person accountable that, that committed this crime. Um, the ordinance, the way that it's written, you can go to the next slide, Brie. The ordinance, the way that it's written, also addresses a, another hole in the, in the um, CWs and the city code. Right now, if someone goes and walks down the street in a neighborhood in North Bend in the middle of the night, and we are lucky enough to have a citizen look out the window and see somebody going and trying doors on cars, and they are all locked, and the suspect did not make entry into the car. We get there because they've called 911 and we're able to detain them. Once we find out that they did not make entry into the vehicles, we let them go. There is no law against that. They've taken a substantial step to create crime and create victims because if the people didn't lock their cars, they would have been in it and then it would have been a car prowl. The way that this ordinance is written, it adds three words that says attempts to. You can go to the next slide and we can. Ordinance. Um, person is guilty of vehicle trespass if he or she knowingly enters, attempts to enter, or remain lawfully in a vehicle that belongs to another. And in researching this, there are several different agencies that have similar ordinances. Um, I spoke to the prosecutors at the city of Auburn, uh, the city of Renton, and the city of Issaquah specifically. Renton added the three words of attempts to enter because of the attempted car prowl. Um, they are able to use that. Their prosecutor trains their police department that they can use this ordinance if they can prove and have a witness statement saying that they tried doors on two or three cars or more. The way the defense of I went to the wrong car, I was looking for my own doesn't work. Um, in the criminal world, they talk and they know that they can go commit crimes where there are holes in the laws where the um, police department won't be able to hold them accountable. They also talk, I don't know if it's a criminal newsletter or what, but we hear it a lot that, you know, you don't want to come to North Bend or Stahlmy because we will put you in jail if we find you. You still book people into jail and you commit crimes. Not everybody does that. If this ordinance is, is approved and we start using it, the word will get out that you don't want to go car prowling in North Bend because you will be in jail and you will be held accountable. Um, I do believe that the last few years, victims in King County have lost a voice. They've lost a seat at the table and the, the rights, a lot of times of the, the offenders of the rights of the victims. And this would give us one more tool in our box to hold the people accountable that victimize our citizens. And as a citizen of North Bend myself, I want my police department putting bad guys in jail and deterring crime. Um, so that's what I'm here to ask today. You guys to look at this and um, more than welcome to answer any questions. Um, one thing I did want to before I leave, those three um, departments that I talked to and their prosecutors have received zero um, pushback and, and appeals of this ordinance that they've used over the last three or four years um, because it is at the misdemeanor level and not the gross misdemeanor level. And it aligns closely to the, um, the way that the criminal trespass second degree is written, which is a misdemeanor. Um, so it was their opinion that as long as we kept it at a misdemeanor level, and um, legally standing, they were fine. I'm here for, uh, for 
any questions that you might have, and I just really appreciate your support on this. Hold on there a second, and let's see if council has any clarifying questions. We move. Ms. Cullen, Mr. Johnson. Um, do the other Valley cities have this ordinance in place? And if so, who? Issaquah has it, and they've had it since November of last year. Um, I've been presenting this at the same time. Um, I came to public safety here, then I went to Snoqualmie Public Safety, so they've been running parallel. And last Monday, City of Snoqualmie, um, they passed it as well. Um, so you guys would have been first, but I, I, the schedule has been a little bit rough for the amount of things on your agenda. So we push back a little bit. Asked and answered. Thank you very much. Good. That help. In uh, <clears throat> helping with making sure you don't have different rules and regulations between the city of Snoqualmie and the city of North Penn. Is this something that is before the council and city of Snoqualmie or has it already been passed? Oh, it, it is passed. I'm sorry. It passed on Monday of last week. Miller? Uh, Captain, is this something that's going forward towards Carnation and down further in the Valley cities? Um, Carnation's a different beast. They are a contract with King County, so it would have to be a county ordinance that would bring that. Thank you. I actually knew that. Thank you, Brian. Chicago. Since I guess it was a Renton that did it before. Have they in King, King County? Have they been able to get uh, things prosecuted through King County on it? No, we're all in the same boat with that, and that's why Renton brought this misdemeanor level so they're doing it through the rent and municipal court as we would be putting our charges on if we use this ordinance would go through the issaquah municipal court misdemeanor level anything we can do with the car that go through the municipal court since <clears throat> see king county won't really possibly We are getting cases where um, you know, if we, we find somebody in a stolen car and beyond a reasonable doubt, we can prove that they knew it was stolen, should have known that it was stolen. Um, those are still getting filed. Um, I think a lot of this comes from, there's not just one reason why the King County Prosecutor's Office has put these restrictions on there. Um, they are, Overworked, not enough prosecutors. Cases are stacked up, and have been for the last two years, three years now. COVID. Um, another thing, another big thing is, I'm not sure if you're aware of the the Ant case that basically legalized any drugs possession in the state of Washington. That was the same. Um, you had to prove knowledge that they knew the drugs were in their pocket. They could use the these are not my pants defense and you couldn't it was unconstitutional to hold them accountable the county prosecutor's office has gone the same way with with possession of stolen vehicle um so i think it's more of a more of a systemic issue with the state um it's not one issue it's just a bunch of different things that have come with a perfect storm where criminals are emboldened and they don't fear any prosecution. This might sound like an odd question and forgive me for not knowing the law well. If we made our theft misdemeanor North Bend, North Bend, we not prosecute that and at least lock them up for 90 days? Um, we could, however, ones that we can prove are stolen, they're still getting prosecuted. Um, ones that are not the ones where we can't prove that they had knowledge this would would end up holding them accountable for that um just a different wording of the law i don't think we would need to double up on a different misdemeanor law when being in this this will cover that. this will cover that you are in a stolen vehicle that's all we need to prove for this thank you appreciate it 
Anyone else? Gossip. I just wanted to be clear then. So the King County is actually prosecuting car thefts. Is that true? Um, yeah, it would have to be a Loctite case for them to take it. Yes, but they and, are taking some. Yes, but it, it's very difficult to actually prove that the person in the car stole it. It's easier to prove that they are in possession of a stolen vehicle. That's what the, most of the suspects are getting charged. I understand. I appreciate your efforts on this. I'll be supporting it. I just, for use of language here is important. Thank you. All right. We have no more questions. We'll turn to the public. A member of the public, either here in council chambers or online, would like to speak on this agenda item. Move to the podium or indicate in the chat box or by star nine. No one moving in chambers? Do we have anyone online? No one online. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rosen, I believe this came through you. Me? Eighty-nine. Code section nine one nine zero dot two zero two zero vehicle trespass as a first and final reading. Yeah, I, I, just I, a moment. The, yeah, I've got I've got the motion in the second in the same question. We've got a duplication of. The, yes, it, it's uh, four four. Mr. Rosen. Are we on track with that? All right. Uh, Mr. Rosen, oh, you accept the motion was for approval of AB 23 044? Yes, I do. And the second came from? Yes, I do. God help. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Rosen, anything to say to this? No, I appreciate the presentation tonight. Thank you very much, and hope we'll give you the tools that you need to do your job. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you, Mr. Gotthelp. I want to thank you guys for bringing this forward. Um, you know, we've had a couple of discussions in the public safety about this, and I know you're up. Anyone else? Being none, the motion before you is to approve AB 23 044, an ordinance adopting North Bend Municipal Code Section 990. 020, vehicle trespass, the first and final reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries and it is unanimous. Council will now be returning to um, what is now main agenda item 11. This is AB 23-039. This is a motion approving the comp plan docket list calendar extension. Ms. Deming. Thank you, Mayor Council. 2023-2024 docket recommendations are different than previous years. Start of the 2024 land use and housing element intensive plan updates, we are required to reach out to the public early and often for amendment requests. One of those ways is to obtain public input is through the docket process. Approval of this list does not approve the changes, but moves them to be a part of considered options as we have work studies, open houses, and public hearings to discuss possible changes. Additionally, approval of this docket does not mean the council supports the changes, only that we are taking them into consideration. After council approval of the docket, if approved, these items will return to planning commission for those public hearings and, and eventually a recommendation to Happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Where my head is tonight, but must have any questions for Mr. Holwood? Thank you. So this this um, docket came to CED on two different occasions, and uh, I just want to clarify uh, the process here. Just went back and looked at my notes this evening, and the first time that we met in this in February, we had talked about um, staff bringing the docket. Specifically for some of the zoning changes, comprehensive and update considerations, back to work study. Um, and there were, I have other notes in here that was talking about even bringing back history and some of these repeat items or field trip. And we fast forward to the March meeting, and unfortunately, my notes are less clear as to why we 
uh, went ahead to move this on consent agenda, but my recollection is that um, we were going to have more of uh, more talk on it from a council level, but also from the planning commission, they would be informed of the history of certain items on here. So I'm just trying to understand the clarification, if you clarify why, like Paul, why we had it on two back-to-back -back CED meetings. One, the direction was bring to work study. The second, and I apologize, I don't have it in my notes, why we brought it into consent agenda on this meeting. I just can't recall. Um, yes, the reason that it was continued to the next meeting, um, I brought it back to make it clear on the process. We do have a planned work study for land use changes, but we need the approved docket to do that research, to get it all together, to cover staff time, bring that back to a work study. So yes, we will have a work study on all land use changes, all land use, you know, things that we will do as part of the comp plan update, get general direction from council and have public meetings and, and planning commission meetings, final recommendation back. So there is plan for work study, but it was misunderstood. And I brought it back to make it clear that we needed the docket to do that work. Thank you for the refresher. Verifying question. When a property owner comes forward with a request with to be placed on the docket, what obligation does the city have to honor that request and in how timely a fashion? In normal years, there's absolutely no obligation. The obligation is now is that we're in a comp plan update year and we are required to solicit public input into changes in our comp plan. Once you receive input, what action are you then obligated to? Take as a result? No obligation. The Planning Commission can recommend what they believe is best and can no, no, approve. I, no, once you've solicited, I'm sorry, once you've solicited input and, and so someone has come forward and said, place this on the docket. Yes. The city can't just say, go home. The city has to honor that request to place that on the docket. Am I not correct? In normal years, you do not have to approve docket requests. You can send them back to applicants and have them pay a fee and process it through a regular application process. Because this is a special year and we're doing a comp plan update, we believe that really we need to approve this because it's part of the public outreach process. She's agreeing with you. She got help. For the, for the clarification, because I know in the past we've had this. What you're saying is the reason you're putting this on is because it's a comprehensive and a, you know in the past it has been brought before the council so that we don't put the planning commission through actions that the council is not going to move forward or have agreed. And there are several items on here that have come before us that have been turned down uh, by this council. My question is, is you're saying because of this year, we have to have it before we discuss it, bring forward to the planning commission? Because we already have a scheduled periodic update of the chapter. So it's already something we're going to review and we have to solicit input on those changes. This, this is a docket for moving forward to the Planning Commission without, as, the, without, without the council weighing in. As part of the comprehensive. And that is a legal requirement that we have. We are required every 10 years to update our comprehensive plan. We're in the 10 year periodic review and we are required to do that by the end of next year. So legally we are respond, we have to, take every item that somebody brings forward to the planning commission docket, what you're saying? In a way, yes. We, we need to take public input into the future and vision of our comprehensive plan. This is one of the ways we are doing that. We could have more people come forward through public hearings and request changes. It's still our obligation to consider those requests and changes in, in the, the process of a periodic you do not need to do that on any other year unless you would like to see an update to the plan. But in, in this, this next two years, we have to bring an update to our comprehensive plan forward. Seems like a heck of a loophole to have people who have brought, been brought this forward before to come in without having to submit all of their paperwork. Point of information. Isn't this a clarifying question? The devil's advocate, what would happen if we didn't? Sounds like a question for Lisa. If, 
It's a symbol, but a devil's advocate uh, question is what would happen if we did nothing and didn't uh, move this forward to planning commission or anything else? Well, my understanding from Rebecca's information is this year we're legally required. Right. Just want to be clear on that. Thank you. Is that your understanding? It is. We are we're legally. Rosen, you have a yeah. Rebecca, in addition to that, we also usually attach recommend the city staff recommends or does not recommend with most of these applications. That's how we're doing it here as well. So there is an opportunity for the city to say, do not recommend planning commission pass this. We do apply that to most docket reasons, if I'm correct. That is still correct. When we bring this opportunity forward, when we do the research. Staff will make a recommendation on land use changes, and it may or may not include these. We, until you approve this, we haven't started a research, our history, and preparing that information. We'll come back. Mr. Elwood. One point of clarification here. Um, based on the timeline that I just articulated for my notes and direct, these particular uh, there are particular comp plan updates that have a history of revisiting of time. Will those go to work study prior to planning? Yes, we are planning on having a council work study to discuss the general direction of the land use plan and zoning map. So yes, our plan is to bring it to council to get initial feedback before we go to the rest of the public and planning commission. Has that been scheduled yet to be scheduled if it we have an we're expecting it to uh, be let me step in. We can't schedule something that hasn't been decided. I, I'm I gotta say that's fine. I'm just asking wonder I, I I just gotta say that I'm a little disturbed that, that there's some conversation that, that might be giving the public impression that you're trying to remove public input prior to the process for evaluation any commission is by state law responsible for and i know that is not your in but I, and so i'm making that statement so that the public's hearing that that is not the intent of the conversation so i appreciate that but i'm i am also cautioning would be in any other clarifying question? Is this something that needs to be presented done today on it, or is this something that could further go further discussion? What you're saying, and I guess you're, what you're saying is, there's nothing we can discuss on this until you move it forward. You can discuss the 20, you can add or remove any of the 2023 code amendments you would not like to see in this year that staff is recommending. Um, but removing the actual comp plan updates again, as we said, we are not, don't believe that that should be done in order to be like input requirement. All right, I think we've exhausted that. I don't. We have any member of the public in chambers wishing to speak since we're now empty? Do we have anyone online? Anyone online? You? Um, Council Member Miller, I believe this came through your committee. Certainly did, Mayor. Make motion, please. Would definitely like to. Okay, motion to approve AB 23 039. So. Approving docket for initiation of 2023 code amendments and 2024 comprehensive plan update, extension for completion of docketed items until December 31st, 2024. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Rosen, I have a second. Uh, Ms. Miller, anything to add? My, I don't think I have anything more to add. It, um, it's following the protocol of what's necessary to move this forward. I'm going to vote yes for that. To, you at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rosen. Yes, I asked to uh, have this <clears throat> pulled and I'll explain why. 
um, page 13 of the packet, this is what I wish to draw attention to, is a staff recommendation for approval or consideration of several items, Dellers, Yee, Ferguson, Hirsch, Richard Johnson, less. All of these run contrary to past positions of council and votes of some as recently as years ago. These are looking off, most of these are looking at increased density and growth in areas that we've just not having that. The reason I want to talk about that tonight is I want to draw attention to it, and I hope that Rebecca, you can do us a favor when you present this to the Planning Commission, that you can also uh, represent some of the council's concerns with these in the presentation. I believe some of these uh, run contrary to things in the past that the council has approved. Um, let me break them down a little bit. The YE application, I believe, is for uh, residential housing on the western part of town. That only two years ago was discussed at length by the council, and the council asked not have residential out there. So I was surprised to see the staff recommending that proof that go forward. Um, as I said, you have the option to approve, to recommend or not recommend. I was very surprised to see a recommendation on that. I believe putting residential out there will dramatically alter the appearance of the western part of I think is probably one of the nicest this we have. Next, uh, Mr. Worsh's property. You guys knock yourself out on that one. That's <laughs> we've beaten that one to death many, many times. Um, but if you want to go down that path again, I guess administration recommendation here, it appears. Um, there may Ms. be Mr. Rosen, I, I want to be sure we're clarifying because I don't don't think you're seeing this as a staff recommendation to approve any of those four items. Is it staff is recommendation to place it on the dock? That is correct. Document. And you Thank could you. put a recommendation not. That's why I asked that clarifying question earlier. Uh, the other three I would like to talk about is Torgerson, Sailors, and Johnson. Um, they're all in the same area, roughly around near the roundabout Les Schwab area. I would ask that uh, we do not piecemeal that area. And council has struggled to try to come up with a zone there that works for everyone. But I believe piecemealing it parcel by parcel is probably not the best approach. I would like to see the council come up with a piece of zone and sort that out this year. Uh, if we start doing a piecemeal, you'll find that it'll just, it'll be a domino effect. So that is also something I wanna make public. Um, those are the three, those are the main issues that I have with it. I hope that you can convey that to the Planning Commission when you make your presentation that there are some extensions here on that. That really was the intent of me having this brought up. And I appreciate your time. Mr. Rosen. Mr. Elwood. Thank you. And um, I'm glad we're having this discussion knowing that these items will come back and that you needed to get our blessing in order to move forward to even do anything on that. So thank you for doing it so we have this debate. I did have a question uh, on the um, on the summary statement. We have 2024 uh, comprehensive plan consideration. One, two, three, four, five items. And I'd like to pay your attention to Deborah Johnson. It's just be simply me missing. Um, and I read down into the section, uh, page 13, I think, that Mr. Rosen was referencing. I do not see the fourth item, the Trevor Johnson East North Penway parcels N2308 994 918 LDR to DC desired mixed use. I do not see those on page 13. That is you, correct. Okay. Staff mistakenly left it off. My understanding missed the first CED meeting that it was brought to CED. That it was original requests that came in on time, staff mistakenly left it off the list when we went to planning commission. So it is on this because it did come in in the appropriate time within the deadline requirement of the doc. And it is still part of consideration. Yes, it is still part of council consideration. Let me clarify then with legal in the clerk. Mr. Elwood's bringing out 
It's not what's in. See. It is. It's not in the Planning Commission staff report. It is in the council recommendation. Okay. What else? Okay. Ah. Uh. All right, motion before you is to approve AB 23-039, approving the docket for initiation of the 2023 code amendments, the 2024 comprehensive plan update, extension for completion, docketed items till December 31st, 2024. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Motion carries. One uh, nay, Mr. Godhill. Very much. And with that, I believe we've reached the end of our regular agenda and we'll move on to Mayor, Council, and Administrator Concerns and Initiatives. Scott Hill. Well, just my normal uh, reach of hoping that it's daylight staying longer, girl out in the street. Please be careful and watch as you're driving through our neighborhoods while these kids enjoy the longer spring days and, and uh, hopefully we'll get some summer weather at some point, at least some spring weather above 50 degrees. <laughs> Ms. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, let's see, for those who aren't quite aware, on this Thursday at 7 p.m., uh, let's see, the Interpretive Center over in Meadowbrook, uh, free to all and open to the public is going to be the speaker, Harold Erlen from Bulk Management. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity for people in the community, whether you've lived here your entire life, you're new, but, uh, to meet a gentleman who has a wealth of knowledge about our herds of elk have grown this time, 150 right now. But if you feel like you want to get out and listen to something new and learn something about your community and these animals that are part of it, you need to go check that out. So uh, other than that, happy Easter to those who celebrate. Mr. Elwood. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd just like to make a call out to Valley Center Stage. This April will be a comedy month, um, the first uh, of which will be a stage reading Steve Martin month, apparently. Um, the first one will be on April 8th at 7.30 at Wild Grange. And it's um, Steve Martin, The Underpants. It's a stage reading. Uh, then the following weekend, we'll open up with a full play by Steve Martin called Picasso at the La Pana Gilles, which the summary statement of that is Picasso and Einstein go into a pub in Paris, France called the La Pana Gilles, and they have a duel to determine whose interpretation of the universe is better, the equation or the art. It's a very, uh, it's a Steve Martin comedy, so it's very intellectually and witty. Come check that out. That's the last three weekends in April. Uh, I just wanted to thank all those involved in the presentation to Mr. Couch this evening. I actually moved and learned some things and what a wonderful history. And we all only hope maybe for 65 years of happy marriage. That it was a real learning. Mr. Hunbeck. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Rosen. I just want to thank the citizens for their communication and input on some of the issues that we talked about tonight. Water is always, uh, I'm sure all of us take time to read them, and we appreciate the input, and these are different decisions that we're wrestling with. I'd like to hear it. Mayor Pro Tem Cullen. Nothing tonight. Not much. Well, I'd have to echo the uh, appreciation for uh, or daylight and um, it drive back to snow area, and that was a little bit disturbing to me. Including this morning, I had a little bit of snow. So, at any rate, in addition to that, City of Snoqualmie will be hosting community emergency response teams. Certain Courses for four consecutive Saturdays starting on April 15th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Snoqualmie Fire Station. Any residents interested in attending, encouraged to call 
five nine one one. Check that in there to see if it's readable. The city, in conjunction with the Snoqualmie Tribe, will be holding a special recycling event Saturday, April 29th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Snoqualmie Middle School. The event is open to all King County residents wishing to dispose of scrap metal, appliances, electronics, fluorescent bulbs, tires, and batteries. North Bend Jazz Walk will be held starting at 6 p.m. to midnight on Saturday, April 22nd in downtown North Bend. The event features 18 different venues playing a fantastic selection of jazz music. For information about the event, including how to purchase tickets, available by visiting the community calendar and the city website. If you somehow don't know about Jazz Walk or its Canyon Blues Walk in the fall, I would suggest you avail yourself. In honor of Earth Day, the city invites community members to join us for our third year North End Beautification Days, April 21st and 22nd. More information about this event available for visiting on the city website. I'll mention that I saw today at least one HOA is joining the city, doing a neighborhood-wide cleanup on their own to catch us. I would encourage other HOAs to look. Starting Monday, April 10th, Washington State Department of Transportation, WashDOT, will begin two, excuse me, in round two, multi-day lane reductions on Interstate 90 in the Preston Interchange and Southeast 82nd Street, Islands Drive. These closures will involve full 24-7 lane closures. There will also be two eastbound lane closures. Find out more about the project, including a link to the WashDOT project overview. Please look at the news section of the city's website. Why do we bring something up to Issaquah? Because it's going to have Every person trying to. Finally, council, I know this isn't on your mind. Saturday, uh, this is your reminder that you have a council retreat at Camp Musquitz. City clerk's already emailed you more information about this event. You all have great. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.